Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, we're going to talk about 5.1 audio in Premiere Pro. Now, of course, this could have a lot of different definitions, whether you're mixing it in Premiere Pro itself or you're receiving it just from a sound mixer. And that's the workflow I want to talk about. You get a bunch of mono audio files from a sound mixer. And in my case, it's going to be going to television for, say, a TV commercial. Of course, the channel layouts may vary based on your specific spec, but I want to talk about how I set up 5.1 sequences in Premiere Pro. Now, I actually create a bunch of sequence templates for this, but I'm going to do that from scratch just to show you guys the workflow if you don't have a setup, which obviously you don't if you're watching this tutorial. So I'm going to click on the new item button down here, and I'm going to click on sequence. And once I get there, again, I have a bunch of custom presets already made for this, but I'm going to just start with digital SLR. Again, this has nothing to do with me editing with SLR footage. It's just a nice setting that has a lot of the settings already in place that I'm going to need. So I'm going to click on DSLR 1080p 24 because my commercial is going to be at 23976. Then I'm going to go to settings, change the editing mode from DSLR over to custom, which will let me change the preview file format. And in my workflow, I like to do QuickTime and Apple ProRes HQ, and that way I can use any of my preview files for my final export. I also don't like to check composite in linear color. That comes down to your specific workflow, but it does some weird things with alpha channels that I don't like. I'm gonna go over and check all the rest of these settings. So time base 23976, correct, 1920, 1080. All of these are looking good. I really just need to go over to my tracks tab now and start setting it up for 5.1. So I'm going to go ahead and change my master actually before I start deleting tracks. I'm going to change that to multi-channel. And when you're doing 5.1 for TV, it's typically going to be eight channels. The first six of which are going to be the 5.1, and then channels seven and eight are typically going to be your stereo mix for any channels that only air in stereo. So I'm going to do eight channels, and then I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to hit minus and hit the plus sign, and this time it's going to be a mono track, which is what I want. So if I click on output assignments, I want to make sure that's going to 1 and 2 in this case. And if I pan it all the way to the left to negative 100, that's going to be only to channel 1, which is what I want. But that's only one channel. I'm going to just check that checkbox as well to make sure it's open, meaning I can see the waveform. So I'm going to hit plus, and I'm just going to make sure there are six channels to start with. So audio track one and two need to go to one and two. Audio's tracks three and four need to go to three and four. Audio tracks five and six need to go to five and six. And you get the idea here. I'm making sure they're only going to five and six. And then I just need to alternate the pan between left and right. And that'll make sure this audio one is going to track one. Audio two, because it's pan right, is going to track two. Audio three, going to track three. Audio four, again, pan right, going to track four etc. And the, for the last channel, this is a matter of preference, but typically when I get a stereo mix for my stereo mix from the audio mixer I'm working with, the way Premiere works is it'll want to put it on one track. So I actually like to make audio track 7 be a standard track, and I like to assign that to 7 and 8, and hit OK, and in this case, I can just click in here and type in 0, which will get it to the center, and now you'll notice I have six mono tracks, all panned left and right appropriately, all their channels assigned with the output assignment, and then audio track seven, which is actually going out to channels seven and eight. And if I take a look, I'll notice that's only on seven and eight, and it's panned to the center. Now the other thing I can do at this point is I can name my audio tracks. And the standard I adhere to for 5.1 sound, obviously this depends on who you're delivering to. Cinema is sometimes different than television. But the first track I'm going to name L for left. Second track I'm going to name R for right. Third I'm going to do C for center. Then I'm going to do LFE for the low frequency or subwoofer. And then I'm going to do LS for left surround or left satellite, depending on who you ask, and RS 
for right surround or satellite and then lastly I'm just gonna do stereo and before I hit OK I'm gonna double check my settings here again I have QuickTime, Apple ProRes HQ, Composite and Linear shut off and lastly I'm just gonna save the preset so I would call this something like Apple ProRes HQ 1920 by 1080 5 1 audio and then I would just take that copy it paste it into the description this time I'm gonna hit cancel because as I mentioned I already have presets for that I'm gonna hit OK and here's my new sequence I'm just gonna call this 5 1 drag it into my sequences bin and then I'm just gonna drag over some of my audio so in this case I'm gonna drag in this whole folder and show you how to insert your tracks now obviously you'd have to trim them to the appropriate timing and everything but for now I'm just gonna drag them in you can see if you scroll down that I have let me just make the actual timeline panel larger and bring it up so the video is less apparent and the audio is more so You'll notice I have L, R, C, L, F, E, L, S, R, S, and stereo. So again, your audio tracks are hopefully labeled in a similar manner. So I will just do L, R, C, L, F, E, L, S, R, S, and stereo and I'm gonna turn down my sound and hit play and if you look at my audio monitors here you'll see the center channel is usually where your voiceover lies so that'll typically be the loudest and you'll notice that I have my stereo doing the full mix on channel 7 and 8 here obviously I could expand this and make it larger so you could see it a bit better as well And that's basically it. Now, the one complication with this is, as I mentioned, Premiere tends to see stereo audio as one track. So I only have one track for it, Audio 7. Now, what happens when I export this file and bring it back in? Well, when I export it, let me just show you how that works. I'm going to hit Command-M, and I'm going to go to one of my presets. So if I go to QuickTime, and then I select Apple ProRes HQ, match source 51 audio let me show you how this was set up basically I have it set to match source for everything from width height frame rate field order aspect ratio all of those things but really the custom part of the setting is under audio so I have it set to audio codec uncompressed and here's where it gets interesting I assign it to stream one for mono track one, stream two, for mono track two, three, four, five, six, and then for seven, for stream seven, it's a stereo track that goes to seven and eight. Now, what happens when I bring this back in? I'm just going to export it to my desktop so I can show you. And I'm going to tell it to import back into the project. So I'll hit export export this sequence and when I bring it back in even if I were to drag it back into this same sequence you'll see well now I've got a little bit of a problem in that there are now eight tracks so this is where the way Premiere handles this gets a little bit annoying actually so I'm gonna have to have a separate setting for screening my exports than I would for actually working so it's a bit annoying but let me show you how that would work I go to new item I click sequence and this time I could just click on the preset that I just saved in this case I'll go to one I already have saved so if I click on this one 1080p 23976 Apple ProRes HQ 51 I named it slightly differently than I was just saying but if I look at the track setting this is where we just were so all I have to do is to click on this one hit subtract and now I'm gonna make audio 7 uh, a stereo L and audio 8 be a stereo R and this time I 
need to double check my output settings. So I need to make sure they're both going to seven and eight. And I need to now pan them correctly. So the one going to the L needs to be minus 100. So that goes to channel seven. And this one for the R is already correct, panned all the way right. So that goes to channel eight. So now I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I drag it into this new sequence, my export, you'll notice that it shows up with eight tracks. And if I look at my monitors here, you'll notice that everything is assigned correctly. I have different levels on seven than I do on eight and everything looks good. So it's just a little bit of a workflow thing. You'll have to remember if you're working with 5.1 audio, but it's a bit complicated the first time you set it up. But then once you have those presets, it's nice and simple. Of course, you might need different ones for different frame rate sequences. But again, once you have the first one set up, not too big of a deal. Hope this helped and let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC. A ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast to vintage effects to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like time code and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.